Well, hello and welcome to a brand new episode of News X Waku, the Diaspora Broadcasting Network. And I'm your host, Mega Sharma. Well, we have two very special guests today on our broadcast from the diaspora community. One living in the United States of America and the other one in UAE. The first episode uh, has Dr. Lavanya Vemsani, who is a distinguished professor of history and religious studies at the Shawnee State University in the United States in Ohio. She holds two doctorates in history and religious studies. Uh, also on the show, next guest is a 61-year-old aspiring model and actor, Puneet Sood, who did his civil engineering and has uh, an experience of over two decades in the media sales industry. Let's listen in to both their journeys. She is the award-winning and distinguished scholar and professor at Shawnee State University, USA. I am here for almost 15 years, so uh, I am away from India for more than 20 years. Also, the editor-in-chief of International Journal of Indic Religions, authored books on modern Hinduism and Lord Krishna's history, thoughts and cultures. No community uh, should not be uh, forced to face um, harassment and stay quiet. NewsX proudly presents the Waku Diaspora Dialogue with Dr. Lavanya Vemsani. Well, hello and welcome. My name is Mega. You're watching NewsX Waku and joining me on the broadcast is Dr. Lavanya Vemsani. Now, she's a distinguished university professor at Shawnee State University in Ohio. And uh, she only this year has gotten a Fulbright Fellowship. It's great to have you, Dr. Lavanya, on the broadcast with us. Thank you. Namaste, Mega. Lavanya, uh, I would like to first of all understand from you uh, how long has it been that you have lived in the United States, uh, in Ohio? Uh, what motivated you to come from India uh, and settle in the United States of America? Was it the American dream that pushed you towards your journey? And uh, how has it been this entire time? Um, it has been a wonderful uh, time here. I actually came here um, from Canada. So I have been in Canada for five years. I got my PhD in Canada at McMaster University. Uh, then uh, I came to Shani State University. Uh, I am here for almost 15 years. So uh, I am away from India for more than 20 years overall. Okay. Uh, and I, I think I came at a turbulent time. Uh, within the year of my arrival in Canada, there was the 9-11 incidents. Mm -hmm. And then um, the, the, the biggest incident was, you know, burning the Hindu temple in um, Hamilton. So the Hindu phobia had been an undercurrent up to that point. And it had been coming out slowly uh, in bursts, but uh, that was the time it really came out. You know, the, the, the person who set the temple on fire said he was mistaken. Uh, it was a, you know, terrorist temple or something. But, uh, you know, there is Hindu temple written in large letters there in front of the temple. So, so, uh, so okay. So, so do you think, uh, uh, this increased hate against Hindus has been a manifestation of the 9-11 that took place. Uh, have you seen, I mean, I mean, uh, you came in during that time into United States of America, into Canada, and then moved to United States. Uh, have you seen a distinct difference in the way uh, uh, the locals uh, have their perception towards Hindus, maybe back in the day, 2011, uh, uh, even before that, and then, and then now, 2021. Um, I actually see it as a long process. Uh, the process of uh, misreading Hindu texts and misrepresenting Hindus began a long time ago. It's, it's in the books. Um, so anybody that goes to school in Canada or the United States actually reads this misrepresentation. Um, they don't read the real Hinduism or real India. So the understanding of uh, India is twisted uh, as it is. So uh, it's going to come out somewhere uh, when, when 
when a large group of people have a misunderstanding of India, it's going to come out somewhere. So that's what is happening now, I think. Okay. Uh, it has been there, but it's coming out more now. Why do you think uh, uh, that there has been an unprecedented rise uh, against uh, the kind of perception that is uh, being built against Hindus? Uh, I'm talking about the recent phenomenon, the event that has happened of uh, dismantling global Hindutva and the kind of sponsorship that it received and the misrepresentation that happened of the Hindu community. Do you think there are more and more of the Indian Americans, Hindu Americans that are becoming successful, are becoming public faces? They are also being uh, huge faces when it comes to representing the Senate, uh, the House of Representatives, the House of Commons. Is that also uh, causing the repercussion, the kind of hate, the disgruntlement of the locals against against a particular community this time around the Hindus? Um, there are multiple factors. Um, the uh, on campuses, though, it has always been there, uh, and since 1980s, there were campaigns against Hindus. Uh, but uh, it has mounted, it has grown uh, in, uh, in, in numbers recently. Uh, are there any uh, communities, organizations or committees that uh, you are an integral part of to allow for, you know, awareness be created about what Hinduism is all about, uh, to spread, uh, to remove any sort of misinformation, disinformation, propaganda campaigns that run against Hinduism, against Hindutva, uh, because, you know, there are so many of these fantastic aspects of Hinduism, be it the yoga, the meditation, you talk about chanting of the Om, uh, uh, the Gayatri mantras, uh, and, and, and so many uh, scientific discoveries that the world has made about uh, the culture of Hinduism uh, that has benefited them immensely. And in fact, there have been several instances of uh, so many of these Westerners actually traveling into India to find that spiritual peace uh, uh, to get themselves enlightened about the meaning of life, understanding what is the depth of life, which which perhaps was lagging lacking in 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 the Western countries. Right, there there is awareness. There is awareness about all these positive aspects, uh, but um, the positive aspects are coming actually from the outside. They're not coming from the textbooks and intelligentsia. Intelligentsia is still stuck on the colonialist narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, which religion doesn't have uh, the negative things in the, um, in the medieval times or previous times, ancient times, you know, all religions had uh, certain things that, um, that were reformed uh, later on and Hinduism has reformed itself and moved on. Mm -hmm. But still they focus on that rather than the positive aspects. Of course, mm -hmm. Ayurveda, yoga, and all the things that you have outlined, Mega, they are all very positive elements. Mm -hmm. But what the intelligentsia and the, they're trying to do, uh, not all of them, I won't say all of them, there is a very positivist element. All so you as a professor uh, uh, have in your individual capacity or as a capacity of a particular organization uh, for the welfare of Hindus or the Indian community, uh, been working towards spreading the right kind of awareness towards people. And also, I mean, I mean, this is something, a small step that can be taken. Could there also be, you know, then this leads to Asian hate. This leads to South Asian hate. This is to Hindu hate. And that's uh, the bigger cause of concern for the United States of America, for the Biden administration on which it has won votes and come to power. Uh, could there be legislations now that can be passed in both the houses to allow for stringent, strict action be taken against elements that are uh, bringing about these extremist activities to malign India, malign Hindus? Yes, uh, it, it could be done because uh, uh, America uh, is a, has all ethnicities and all nationalities, all uh, cultures. So it's, it's for the good of America that all cultures and uh, ethnicities, nationalities get together. Um, they're all Americans at the end of the day. So um, actions could be taken. Uh, it is happening. 
um, as you know, Kona, we have done a congressional briefing. Uh, mm. And uh, we have also um, tried to spread awareness through our uh, work uh, with the HAF podcast. Mm. And we have also worked, uh, I am on uh, Ohio Academy of History. So we are also trying to um, spread awareness. Uh, Ohio Academy of History actually has celebrated Diwali last year, uh, inviting many and uh, Bhutanese Hindus especially. Uh, they faced uh, difficulties back home. So, mm -hmm. um, so we are um, trying to uh, bring awareness uh, and many states uh, have also declared uh, October as a Hindu Heritage Month, uh, which is a new um, activity that is going on. So we, we have started the process uh, and some, some things are happening, right? You know, the recognition for uh, Hindu Heritage Month and all that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, would, I would hope uh, that this, this would uh, help uh, Hindu community uh, across the world uh, to, to voice their concerns and also seek uh, help uh, in highlighting uh, the harassment, the Hindu phobia that they face in different fields. Uh, and it's important uh, and no community uh, should not be uh, forced to face um, harassment and stay quiet. Uh, they, they have the right to voice concerns. They have the right, they have equal rights like anybody right. else. Right, absolutely. Uh, Lavanya, what are the other issues uh, you having lived in United States for a really long time now, and you are well versed with the, the kind of culture, the ethos that the country provides to its minority communities, to, to those uh, who have migrated into the country. Uh, what more can be done and in which other areas uh, can this um, ameliorment that can be made uh, for the Indian community per se, be it Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, uh, or, any other, uh, or any other religion? On a, on a larger level, uh, America is a very open society. Uh, nobody actually asks you for your um, uh, identity, any kind of identity. So um, it's an open society. So that's one of the reasons the Indian community thrives here, uh, mm -hmm. made the Hindus or Muslims or uh, Sikh. Um, so one side it is open and uh, allows, provides opportunities for thriving. But on the other hand, Hindus and other communities have failed to spread awareness about who they are, what they do. Uh, there is a lack of awareness. And the group that is spreading information is spreading misinformation. The academia, the schools, colleges, they are actually spreading misinformation. So the, so the problem here is not the American society. The American society is open, but the information that is coming out is actually misinformation. Mm -hmm. um, anytime they launch a program, uh, for example, uh, against Holi or whatever, um, it is a misinterpretation. Right. The, uh, the festivals are misinterpreted, the goddesses are misinterpreted, the demons are misinterpreted. It's mm -hmm. colonialist narrative. It was always there, but it's coming out now. According to the colonialist narrative, the, the demons the, are interpreted as natives and the guards and positive elements are interpreted as the uh, oppressors. Mm -hmm. So the same elements continue within the narratives and they use the same elements to argue Hinduism is you know, oppressive, uh, which is not true. Which is absolutely the, 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 the indigenous versus uh, invader paradigm doesn't work for India at all because there were no invaders. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And the epics are metaphorical and uh, historical elements are there, but it's metaphorical. You cannot uh, identify modern 21st century uh, ethnic groups to these. So it's it's totally based on misinterpretations. Mm -hmm. uh, misinterpretations spread fast mm -hmm. and it's difficult to get rid of them. That is the problem uh, that Hindus are facing. It's not that Hindus are hated. Right. Hindus are facing a misinterpretation, mounted campaign of misinterpretation that uh, gets them into trouble. Absolutely. You know, Ravanya, I would love to speak with you uh, a lot more about uh, what is happening with regards to the Hindu Americans, or for that matter, Hindu 
in those who are residing in Britain and uh, elsewhere in the Western world, and what more can be done to provide for uh, uh, the correct kind of information, the right kind of awareness uh, uh, to the world. And, 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 and you are definitely doing a great job of it in, in your personal capacity of, of uh, taking forward the right message uh across the entire world and but 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 i'm completely short of time uh but i would love to have you back on the broadcast with me uh in one of the uh, more important uh, discussions that will primarily focus on how to allow for the growth and progress of hinduism uh and indianness across the world in a more positive fashion than than what is at this point of time being done that is detrimental to our community but thank you very much for joining me on the broadcast on News Axwaku for today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Mega. He is a 61 year old aspiring model and actor who is redefining the industry scene. Not in my wildest imagination or my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would actually be coming in front of the camera. He has had a successful stint as a media professional when he first arrived in UAE in 1988. Yes, we do miss India. Uh, we make it a point, at least me and my wife make it a point to, you know, uh, uh, once or twice every month we go down to uh, one of our favorite restaurants over here for, for a Pani Puri. Newsx proudly presents the Waku Thaispora Dialogue with Puneet Sur. Well, hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX Waku and my name is Neha. Joining me on the broadcast today is a very special guest. His name is Puneet Su. He's from uh, Dubai. He's been there for the past 33 years. Uh, he visited the city uh, in 1988 and has been there ever since. He, in fact, uh, is a civil engineer by qualification, but decided to dabble in the media and uh, has, in fact, now begun to grace your television screens as a model in television commercials. It's good to have you, Puneet, on the broadcast. Very good evening, Mega, and it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be on your channel and talking to your person. Absolutely. You know, it's a privilege to interview as, interview as well, because, uh, you know, uh, being a civil engineer, then you talk about uh, dabbling in the media, uh, behind the scenes, uh, sales and marketing was your forte, and then now deciding to grace the camera, uh, and that too at a very ripe age when you are in your sixties. So that's so. So oh, what's that concoction? What was that thing that pushed you to come in from the camera? Uh, was it a lifelong dream, and you decided now is uh, the fact that I have all my responsibilities done, and uh, now that I'm getting the opportunity, to why not grab it? Yes, to a certain extent, what you say, Mega, is uh, true. Uh, no, not in my wildest imagination or my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would actually be coming in front of the camera. Uh, after I quit my nine to five job in 2016, December, I spent a couple of years uh, shooting in the dark, you know, trying to figure out what's going to be the next stage in my life. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, and I've said this very often in the past as well, is I hate the word retire. It suddenly makes me 10 years older than what I am, you know. So I wanted to create something for myself which would make, take me through this stage of my life. Uh, acting, or rather modeling, came to me by accident. Better. I was in fact sitting with one of my clients and uh, well, over a cup of coffee, he, you know, what's life going to be after 60 and not doing a nine to five job anymore. So what next? And he said, why don't you consider modeling? And I had this, I still remember I had this very quizzical look on my face. And I said, sorry, uh, what did you just say? And he said, yes. why don't you consider modeling? And I said, with all these handsome hunks, with six and eight packs and rippling biceps going around, where do you actually expect me to fit in? And he said, you know something, you've got very sinister dark you know, a month later, I started my profession, I made my foray into modeling. Uh, 
as a background extra, Meta. I was a background extra. And if you actually blinked your eyes, you would have missed me in that particular advert. Okay. But you know, fortune favors the brave, and I call it a fortunate stroke of serendipity, if you ask me. And one thing led to another. And today, uh, by the grace of the good Lord, uh, I have done assignments for some of, I think, the biggest powerhouse brands in the region, if I may. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, like I said, this is a, a show that where we talk about the diaspora community and how they have moved overseas and uh, done India proud uh, by the kind of innovative work that you're doing. And you definitely qualify for that. So I would like to understand about your journey. You speak about back in 1988 when you decided to move to Dubai, UAE. Uh, why was that decision taken to begin with? And how has the journey been the 33 years so far? Mega, I come from a business family in India, and uh, one of the reasons I think this will answer your question of, uh, you know, why am I a qualified civil engineer? Now, I come from a family in India which was in the construction business. It's a story for another day, but uh, in short, uh, I was basically groomed, educated to join the family business, which I did, and for reasons best known, I, I decided not to continue with it. And then Dubai called, you know, to, uh, maybe I remember it was an Air India flight. It was my first flight, international flight, to be very honest with you. And I landed in Dubai on the 18th of August, 1988 at 8.20 in the evening. And I had just about enough money for me to take a taxi to my, my uncle who lived over here. Okay. And uh, it, it, was, it, 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 it was overwhelming initially. But uh, yes, I started off uh, with, with sales. I was into sales and then I had the opportunity two years down the road to join one of the leading newspapers in Dubai. It uh, wasn't a long-term plan. I wanted to buy a car for myself and get a home back, you know, a, a home uh, in India. Uh, what was supposed to be a three-year stay with them actually turned out to be a close to 14-year stint with the newspaper. Uh, and, 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 and by then, the media bug had written me true, truly, you know, and uh, I thought that this is where I should be. I then continued uh, my, my journey in media sales with a telecommunication company till, like I said, 2016, I said, that's it. No more nine to five for me. There's more in life than a nine to five job. So it's been a roller coaster journey, my I've learned so much. Uh, uh, you know, I've taken in so much, uh, and and what I've realized is that this is a country which is which has given us so much. You know, the entire family, uh, mm -hmm. and and I, I never tire of repeating that this is indeed now home away from home. So it's been a roller coaster journey, like the ups and the downs, frustrations, triumphs. So we Absolutely. we've had everything during these thirty three odd years. Absolutely, and and you know, I've visited Dubai, and so have many Indians because it's a flight. Uh, just a two and a half, three hour flight. And it, it, it's almost as if you're traveling from India to Bombay, uh, sorry, Delhi to Bombay or, or a Chennai or, or a West Bengal or a Kolkata. So, so, so uh, and there are maximum number of Indians uh, that are located in UAE and, 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 and especially from down south. Uh, so do you by any chance miss India? I mean, I mean, just asking you uh, for the sake of it, because the, because the, the, the essence of Indians is, is very much there in Dubai, uh, as I've witnessed in several regions, several parts. Uh, yes, Megha, we all miss India. Uh, I'll tell you something very funny. When we came here in the uh, 80s, the late 80s, early 90s, uh, given that Dubai is a cosmopolitan uh, city and, you know, we, I think we are close to 160 nationalities over here. But there were days in the, in the late 80s and the 90s, Mega, when you strolled out into the streets and when you saw someone who was not an Indian, you wondered mm. what the hell was he doing in Dubai. Mm. So, so that's kind of amplifying the Indian diaspora and the Indian presence over here. Yes, we do miss India. Uh, we make it a point, at least me and my wife make it a point to, you know, uh, uh, once or twice every month, we go down to uh, one of our favorite restaurants over here for, for a Pani Puri. And uh, yes, yes, I'd be very, very forthright and very honest in telling you, we miss India. I, are they as patriotic as, as 
Are there times that you, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you must be visiting back home. Uh, where in India do you live or where are your uh, 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 roots in India? And do you visit often? Okay, Mecca. Uh, I was born in Pune. And I think I was six or seven years old when my family moved to Goa. I have been born and brought up virtually in Goa. I've done my schooling and my college in Goa. Uh, my wife is from Indore in Madhya Pradesh. So you decide where my roots are. So it okay. could be Pune or Goa or Indore for that matter, you know. So right. yeah. And do you visit India often? Do you get the opportunity to visit India often? Yes, absolutely. Uh, India is on a travel plan at least twice in a year till, of course, the, the pandemic last year, we had to, uh, you know, cut short all our plans. Mm. But uh, we have always made it a point to at least mark dates for uh, India travel at least twice in a year. So okay. we keep in touch great. with India. We've That's got great. family back home. And, and now with your new stint of coming in front of the camera and modeling, uh, do you think Bollywood come calling or uh, the advertising industry <laughs> in Bollywood might just come calling? Are you into telepathy, Mecca? Because <laughs> I was just going to... I read your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll be very honest with you. I have auditioned for two Bollywood movies. I can talk about one, which is Akshay Kumar's Bell Bottom, which is already out in the cinemas. And it oh, was wow. uh, something which was so near and yet so far. And there's another one which I cannot talk about as yet because it hasn't hit the screens. Uh, but yes, I have flirted around with Bollywood. It's absolutely fascinating. I have no regrets that I didn't get the role. But the fact is that it was a huge experience for me. It was a learning curve. And uh, I had my sights firmly set on Bollywood. I had my sights firmly set on uh, uh, modeling assignments in India if I get an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, uh, the, the country is growing great guns now. So it's, it's a very appropriate time to join the bandwagon, you know. And uh, before I let you go, Puneet, one question that I would like to ask you is, uh, is there a particular community, Indian community, Indian diaspora community or, or organization that you are part of? Or are there such organizations lacking at this point of time in, in UAE or in Dubai particularly? And, or, and if at all there are any that are existent, what are the kind of agendas, objectives that they have, especially for the growth and welfare of Indians living in UAE? I, I think we have a very established network of uh, organizations in the UAE which look after the interests of the Indian diaspora over here. And I have been closely following. Unfortunately, I have not been associated uh, directly, but I have been following their progress all these years, the last 32, 33 odd years. And I think they are doing a super job of looking after the interests of the Indian diaspora over here. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a need for more? Why not? Uh, the population is growing over here. There are lots of people coming in over here. There are a lot of new Indians, uh, you know, the younger generation coming in here. So I think any organ organization which basically serves the interests of the diaspora now and in the future, more than welcome. Join the bandwagon, as I always say. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Puneet, it's been such a pleasure talking to you and understanding your life in Dubai over the course of these three decades and more. I wish you all the very best with the new stint that you are thoroughly enjoying. And we enjoyed hosting you on our channel on NewsX Waku. And here's hoping to uh, getting you back on the broadcast uh, maybe in a few months and years, perhaps when you are in a Bollywood or in even an international Hollywood movie. And we spot you over there and say, that's Puneet Sood. And that's whom we spoke about uh, uh, just a few months or years ago. So thank you very much for joining me on the broadcast. Thank you. NewsX ITV Network have proudly launched the Waku Diaspora Broadcasting Network. Waku DBN will be India's first mainstream platform dedicated to the diaspora community. Help support us, become Waku patrons at memboro.com slash waku. You will get the first access to our interviews, make recommendations, merchandise access, ask questions and get a shout out of thanks on our TV shows.
You can also suggest to us who should get the Waku Golden Chakra Awards and also tell us who should get into the Waku Hall of Fame. Limited memberships are available at 100 rupees per month on Memboro Waku. Sign up now. Log on to memboro.com/waku.